Hello, Casey from Interweb Kaiju here. It's another quick review roundup. Today it's going to be about superhero movies. Today I'm going to be talking about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Black Widow, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Doctor Strange in the Multitude of Madness. Up first is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Why did no one tell me Shang-Chi had a giant monster fight? People kept saying it's more grounded and a martial arts film. Grounded is not the case, but that's not even true with the fights before the finale. Lots of CG wire foo and most of the actual martial arts are hidden by overly dynamic cameras. I had some doubts while watching, but by the end, I quite enjoyed Shang-Chi. On January 19th, 2022, I gave Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings 4 out of 5 stars. Black Widow, a group of great actors doing surprisingly well to overcome their miscasts in this mediocre movie. At best, it reminds me of how great it is to see Black Widow in action. We need more action movies with Florence Pugh and Rachel Weisz. Weisz? Weisz? Wise? I don't know, but on January 14th, 2022, I gave Black Widow 3 out of 5 stars. Um. Florence Pugh is also very good in the Hawkeye shell. Spider-Man No Way Home. There's so much to like here. Defoe and Garfield steal the show and that's saying something since everyone, especially the main three in the Spidey group, do a phenomenal job. This is an emotional Spider-Man and its ability to swing, get it? Fluidly from comedy, action, and drama is extremely impressive. Back to action, great imaginative choreography, even if a lot of it was just CG models tussling. There's a lot of nostalgia and meme baiting, but I personally never felt upset at it. You may be wondering why I'm not slapping a 5 out of 5 on this, and it's hard to explain. It doesn't even feel like a proper movie. Maybe it's due to picking up right after the last film, but many franchises do that and still feel proper. Maybe it's just the MCU in general nowadays that they rely so heavily on so many established characters and ideas, or the fact that this movie also relies on the other Spider-Man movies as well. Maybe it's just the overall story structure? I don't know, and I don't care to. If I broke up the film's plot beats and put them against other movies, I'd probably lose a little enjoyment in the film, and I don't want to. I had a great time watching Spider-Man No Way Home. I would surely recommend it to basically anyone, but it just doesn't feel like a perfect movie to me. On January 1st, 2022, I gave Spider-Man No Way Home a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And last but not least, Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange in the Multitude of Madness. Maybe saying Sam Raimi's isn't fair, but he did direct it, and I am a fan. I really like this movie. Maybe it's because I liked the returning cast and it wasn't weighed down by too many characters I wasn't fond of. Maybe it's because it doesn't feel or often visually look like an MCU movie. It was just interesting and enjoyable to me the entire time. The only real cons I have are that, in common MCU fashion, there's some very questionable CG mixed in with very impressive CG, and that the antagonist's entire backstory is from other media. Though, some people may think the latter as a pro, which is fine, but to me it's not. It entertained, it pleased with easter eggs, it shocked with kills, it was good. Up there competing with my favorite MCU outings, on May 5th, 2022, I gave Doctor Strange in the Multitude of Madness a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching.